upon its release in 1990, Little Nemo the Dream Master seemed to fit right into Capcom's lineup of stellar NES games based on Disney properties. There was Tailspin, Chip and Dale's Rescue Rangers, and everyone's favorite, DuckTales. Surprisingly, the movie Little Nemo is based upon isn't actually made by Disney at all, and has absolutely nothing to do with Finding Nemo, despite containing both clowns and fish. The movie, titled Little Nemo Adventures in Slumberland, was actually produced by Tokyo Movie Shinsha, the anime studio that created the cult classic Akira. Little Nemo was dubbed into English, and even features voice acting from Mickey Rooney. You can definitely tell that it's anime, though. I mean, the titular character has a flying squirrel as a pet, and he even dresses up like Sailor Moon. It doesn't get much more anime than that. Now if you're thinking, wait, I thought Nintendo didn't want games that looked like anime being released in North America. Well, that is true. My best guess is that Capcom snuck this one past Nintendo by referring to the 1905 American comic strip by Windsor McKay that serves as the basis for the Nemo character. In both the comic strip and the movie, Nemo seems to be a natural at captaining ships and aircraft, which makes me wonder if he's supposed to be a young version of Captain Nemo from 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Or if you prefer, the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. The game certainly draws its inspiration from the movie, and actually does a great job at capturing the look and feel of the film. When Nemo goes to sleep, he's transported to Slumberland, a surreal world of dreams. In the game, Nemo must collect keys to move forward, and the golden key given to Nemo is critical to the movie's plot. Many other elements from the movie, like running from a train, or the upside-down topsy-turvy world, are also featured in the game. The NES release even opens with a cutscene featuring some dialogue straight from the film. A strangely dressed person climbs into Little Nemo's window and tells him he's been invited to Slumberland by a princess. If that sounds like Nemo is about to disappear into the back of a windowless white van, you'll be happy to know that he declines the offer. Well, until they give him candy. This is all based on a kid's movie, so I can assure you that the candy isn't drugged or anything. Oh my god, it is drugged. Get out of there, Nemo. Stranger danger. Nemo has unique powers in Slumberland, and when he feeds some animals enough roofies, he can ride them. And sometimes he wears their skin. Yeah, that's pretty messed up. You know who else has dream powers? Freddy from Nightmare on Elm Street. Just throwing that out there. Nemo's ultimate quest is to rescue Morpheus, the king of Slumberland. And no, it's not the Morpheus from the Matrix. This is Little Nemo, not Little Neo. The animal riding gameplay was very unique for the time, and a similar mechanic would later be seen in Kirby's Dreamland 2 for the Game Boy. Critics praised the game for its colorful graphics and impressive chiptune soundtrack, and in modern times, IGN listed it as number 68 on their top 100 NES games of all time. Sadly, Little Nemo the Dream Master never got a re-release on modern platforms like many of Capcom's other hits. At least if you want to pick up a used copy on eBay, it's not that expensive. But the game itself is notoriously difficult. Modern players will have to compete against constantly respawning enemies, intense auto-scrolling levels, and of course, instant death hazards. But what if I told you how to find tons of secret 1-ups and other power-up items that could make this game much easier? What if I told you how to find every hidden key so you can finally unlock the way to Nightmare Land? And what if I told you how to defeat all of the game's challenging nightmare bosses? On today's episode of You Can Beat Video Games, we'll learn all of that and more.
If you're new to the channel, we're doing deep dives on retro video games and giving you the professional strategies that can be used by the casual gamer. Please make sure to subscribe and click on the bell for notifications so you don't miss any new videos. Let's get started. We'll press start here and be whisked off to our first dream, the Mushroom Forest. Yeah, that's right, mushrooms. Are we actually dreaming here, or are we tripping balls? It's kind of hard to say. The first character that we meet is a green clown named Flip. Flip has a very prominent role in the movie. He's the one that's voiced by Mickey Rooney. Here in the game, he actually gives us some useful information, and I kind of wish that more NES games would do this. Usually, they rely on the manual to give us this kind of instruction. Well, once you get started, you will notice that your B button allows you to throw candies, and the candies can stun some enemies, but others, like this frog, if you feed them three, they'll become tranquil and you can ride them. Jump with the frog to the top of these platforms and get on top of this blue mushroom to get the very first key. As the frog, you'll be able to defeat enemies by jumping on top of them, although it does make you walk a little bit slower. Normally, if you jump on an enemy as Nemo, you'll take damage. He is not Super Mario. On top of this other blue mushroom is the second key, and you'll just want to make your way to the right, where you'll find an enormous red mushroom, and on top of it is key number three. You'll certainly need the enhanced jumping abilities of the frog to get that key, so make sure to keep it on, and take out these two small frogs before pressing select to turn the frog suit off. Once we feed this mole, we'll be granted some digging powers, so just press down to dig into the dirt below him, where you'll find key number four. Then make your way over to the left, where we'll find the fifth key, and if we dig into the wall to the far left, and then make our way down at the end, we'll find a secret room. The mole can't jump, and he can't attack either, so once you get down in here, you're gonna need to press select to turn him off. We'll feed this lizard some candy and we'll be able to ride him and grab that one up. And over here, we'll be teleported back to the top of the big red mushroom. As the lizard, we'll be able to climb up vertical surfaces like the wall over here on the right. So just kind of jump at it, you can climb up. And the lizard also will allow us to fit in some smaller spaces. If we climb up the waterfall here, we can grab a secret one up before making our way to the right and climbing the other side of the waterfall, which will lead us to the sixth key, which is the final one that we need to complete the first dream. All we need to do now is just make our way to the right where we'll find the door, and as long as we have all six keys, we'll be able to proceed through to dream number two. Between levels, we're treated to this short cutscene of Nemo waking up in his bed, and interestingly, this is also how artist Windsor McKay would end his early Nemo comic strips. So that's a nice little touch by the developers. Dream 2 is the Flower Garden. The difficulty ramps up quickly here in dream number 2. At the beginning, we'll meet this goblin. These goblins are friendly characters that aren't introduced until Act 3 of the movie, but they're featured very prominently here in the game. You'll find all five of them, unless you decide to skip this one that's hidden down below this lake. Her name is Oompy. Oompy has a clue for us, but there aren't any secret power-ups down here or any extra lives, so feel free to just skip right over this part. Whenever you get out of here, do not throw your candy and stun this snake. You will not be able to jump over him without taking damage if he's stunned. Instead, feed your candy to the gorilla, the gorilla is the most powerful form in the entire game. He has a maximum health of 6, you can punch enemies by pressing the B button, and he can even climb vertical surfaces like the lizard. Strangely enough, in the instruction manual, they show a picture of him smoking a cigar. It's very surreal. Up here in the trees, we'll have our first encounter with the game's most annoying enemy, the Float Fiends. Switch off of the gorilla and grab the lizard. You'll need to grab this key while trying to avoid the float fiends. They kind of move in a wavy pattern, but once they get right above you, 
they'll commit to one direction and just start moving downward. Use that information to manipulate them when possible. When you get down from the trees, head to the left, and you'll see why we wanted the lizard. He's the only one that can fit through that small space. Once you get through, hit select and feed the hornet, and we will be able to gain his powers. Walk off the side and collect the key, then tap the jump button over and over again to fly. You'll want to land periodically, because if you don't, you'll eventually get tired and you won't be able to fly anymore. That will end in disaster. The hornet cannot swim, so if you touch the water you'll have to switch off of him, but there's another one right over here to the left that you can grab. You'll want to jump from flower to flower, and you can attack the enemies by pressing B with your stinger. Manipulate this float fiend and then carefully grab this key. You don't want to touch those spikes. They're an instant death hazard. Once you have the fourth key, head down to the water to your left, switch off of your hornet, and go down into this secret area. Down here we'll find a key and a one-up, but make sure you're very careful walking off the platform with the key. You don't want to touch those spikes. Jump right after the rock falls in front of you. You should be able to easily clear these gaps and come out of the secret area. Once you exit the secret area, make your way up this hill to the right and jump into the water. You can use your candy to stun these tadpoles. And if you need some health, there will be a full health refill over here to the right. Take this shaft upwards and at the top you'll be able to get a lizard. But watch out for this crow that throws eggs at you first. Feed him three pieces of candy and get on his back so that we can climb this tree over to our right where we'll find the sixth and final key. The lizard gives us a thin profile so we can go right by that enemy. And once you have the sixth key, just jump and move down to the right and we'll find the door and be on to the third dream. Once again there's a cutscene of Nemo waking up in bed. Come on Nemo, you gotta get back into bed. We got stuff to do. Dream number three is a good bit different from the first two dreams that we played. It's known as the House of Toys, and this is an auto-scrolling stage. The key collecting gameplay is de-emphasized here, so you'll grab two keys right here at the beginning, and another one as you ascend these platforms to the right. Once you get over this orange barrier, the train starts to move. Position yourself at the front of the first purple car. Most of the dive bombing airplanes at the beginning of the stage will miss you in this spot. You definitely need to jump over these purple barriers. If they crush you onto the left side of the screen, you will die instantly. As you move forward here, you can grab this one up and make sure to get these health power-ups that you see. Even if you die and have to restart this level, all the health power-ups will respawn, so you might as well try to collect them in each run. I have no idea how to get this one up right here. It may be impossible. If you stand at the back of the first purple car, none of these crushers will hit you. It's a very safe spot, but you need to move forward here to trigger this flying squirrel so that you can get underneath that spike before it gets too close to the left side of the screen and you'll be unable to dodge it. Make your way to the right here. Whenever you see these hot air balloons, you need to back up until they drop their payload, and then you can move forward underneath them. There are some keys to grab here. We only need six keys to finish this level, and there are eight in total in here, so as long as we get at least one of those three keys, we'll be okay. Watch out for the crushing ceiling here, especially this part that you have to move under. There's another one up here. The rest of the crushing spikes can be avoided by ducking. Grab this health if you need it, and just duck down when you see these spikes. If you have to take a hit from an airplane, it may be better than trying to jump over them. Sometimes if you jump too high, you'll hit that spike, and of course it's an instant death hazard. Once the train starts ascending here, you'll know that you're close to the end. Definitely hang in there during this part. You're almost to the end, you don't want to mess it up now. Clear this area, you can grab the one up if you want. And here are those two other keys that I mentioned before. So as long as you got one of those three in the middle, 
you'll be able to clear the house of toys and move on to dream number four. I have some good news. There's no auto-scrolling in dream number four, just good old animal riding and key collecting. But we will be doing a lot of swimming, because dream number four is the night sea. As we enter the night sea, we'll encounter another one of our goblin friends. This guy is going to tell us about the hermit crab animal that we can ride in this stage. And as we make our way to the right, we'll jump into the water and grab the first key. You really can't miss it. Over here we'll see that hermit crab that our goblin friend was talking about. Feed him three candies and take over his body. Now you'll see as the hermit crab, when you jump in the air and land on the sand, you'll automatically dig into it. If you press the A button and a direction, you'll dig even more. Make sure to grab the second key near the ship, and then dig all the way down to the center of this sandy area, where we will find another secret. Press the B button to attack with the claws and take out this stumper enemy, and grab another 1-up. As you exit this area, you'll reappear on top of the pirate ship, and you'll need to dig underneath it and move to the right to get across. Watch out for these barnacle enemies. You can attack them with your claws. And here I'm going to hit the select button so that I can swim. And we're going to take over this fish. The fish is the most maneuverable swimmer in the game, although he has no attacks. We want to come down here into this cave, and in this dead end, we'll be transported to a secret room. We'll certainly need the fish's maneuverability here, as we try to carefully grab a 1-up while avoiding those spikes on the ceiling which are an instant death hazard. And even more importantly, we'll find the third key. Head out to the right, and once you exit the hidden cave, we want to backtrack to the area where we found the fish, and go into the cave to the right. Watch out for this barnacle, he got me. But that's okay, as soon as I switch out of the fish I'll have 3 health anyway. Then we need to get this frog, and do a very light jump to make it up onto this platform. You don't want to jump too hard, you'll hit the spikes and die. Swim down here, and we'll need to switch off of the frog, so that we can get into this hermit crab, and dig down into the sand to find key number 5. Once we have the crab, you'll notice that hitting your head off of this rock makes it so that you can't dig, so make sure to get some open space and dig down into the sand and grab the fifth and final key. And here we'll need to get rid of the hermit crab. There's a health over to the left if you need it. And then we'll carefully swim down here under these spikes. Don't touch them. Down, down to the bottom. We can use our candy to stun those guys. And then we just have to come out to the right. And there it is. The door to dream number five. Now while the previous four dreams have been fairly straightforward, dream five is a very large maze-like area that will really test our ability to use our animal companions. Dream five is Nemo's house. As we enter dream five, we will encounter Umpo, the largest of the goblins. All he wants to tell us is that we're in Nemo's house. Yeah, we can read Umpo. It says Nemo's house right at the bottom of the screen. I think we could figure that out on our own, thanks. Make your way up onto that banister and come over to the left, where we'll find a frog. Feed him the three candies and take over his body. Make your way back to the right. Now watch out for this flying turtle that pukes coconuts and get into this small corridor. As you head down, you can use the frog to attack the bats by jumping on them, and we will find our first key at the very end. Now, the next key that we need to get is going to be in the basement of the house. So make your way to the right, and you know, we actually wanna use the lower set of stairs here. Watch out for this guy, and it got me. All right, head down here and watch out for this plate monkey. He will throw plates at you, and he actually takes two jumps to take out. Head down into this hole in the bottom of the screen, make your way to the left through this tight hallway, and you can see there's a key there we need to get. 
but we can't jump up there just yet. We need to make our way to the right, avoid these crushers. They're not instant death hazards, but they will damage you. And over here, we'll find a lizard we can ride. Make your way back, being careful to avoid the crushers again. And we can climb up the wall here, where we'll grab a 1-up and our second key. Now, you may have noticed up at the top, there is a hornet we can take over. So that's what we're going to do. Climb up this wall with a lizard, turn him off, and feed this guy three candies. Now we'll have the ability to fly. Not only can we fly as the hornet, but we also have the stinger attack, which will definitely come in handy with all the enemies up here. Tap on the A button multiple times to fly up. Grab that health if you need it. If you don't need the health items in this area, you may just want to leave them behind. You might want to come back and get them later if you're damaged down the road. So that's why I'm going to leave that health box there over on the right. The third key is right here near the chandelier. And then we need to make our way across these blocks up here on the top. There's going to be a fourth key all the way over here on the left. There it is. Once you have key number four, we can go up even higher into the house. Make your way over to the right here. Try to skip that health potion for now. We may need it later. Fly up into this section. Make our way over to the right. Oh, the crusher got me. You don't walk very fast as the hornet. But there is a health power up and the fifth key up here. Make your way back the way that we came. Watching out for the crushers. Drop back down through. And then we're going to make our way all the way back to the left. So just head all the way back. See, I told you we were going to come back past that potion again. We still are going to walk through it another time. So if you don't need it now, don't grab it. And up here at the top, we are going to find our final animal transformation, the mouse. Watch out for these crushers. And here he is. Hit select to turn off the hornet, feed him three candies, and the mouse is almost exactly the same as the lizard, with a couple big exceptions. Number one, five maximum health, much better. And also, if you press the B button, you can attack with a hammer. The hammer doesn't deal a lot of damage, so you can try to attack these enemies, but you may not actually be able to defeat them without hitting them multiple times with the hammer. It can actually destroy certain types of blocks, and that's the only way we're going to be able to move forward in this area. So keep making your way to the right, and there they are. These are the blocks that you have to break with your hammer. It's very tricky to hit the one that's like right at your height for whatever reason. Uh, you can mostly try to avoid it in that area. Now make your way all the way to the right here. This guy takes two hits with the hammer. He usually hits me, so if you're down to your last health, you may just want to clear these blocks off here, and there is a hornet down below that you can take over. And then you can fly back up here and fight that plate monkey. If you have a health or two to spare, just take him out with the mouse. Drop down here onto the bed, and we'll find the door with seven locks and be able to move on to dream number six. Capcom changes up the gameplay again for dream number six. This time we don't have to focus on finding keys at all. They're just neatly lined up in front of the door at the very end, so we just have to get through. But that doesn't mean it's going to be easy. Dream six is the cloud ruins. At the start here, we'll meet our final goblin friend. This time he tells us that there's a ruined city in the clouds. Yeah, thanks. Jump carefully from rooftop to rooftop, and when you see this moving platform here, make sure to jump off of it when it's in a high point. If you fall between the houses, it's instant death. Take the lower platform to the middle one, and then to the diagonally moving one and jump over here where we will be able to get our hornet. The hornet will allow us to fly, which is critical here. 
there's going to be a frog ahead, it's a trap. Avoid the frog. Make your way over and the screen will start scrolling upwards quickly. You'll need to make your way from platform to platform so that you don't run out of flight energy and sometimes the platforms will almost disappear off the bottom of the screen but you might need to touch on them anyway. Be careful that the screen doesn't scroll you off and make your way to this platform on the left, the one to the middle, and then finally to the top. You need to touch the platform on the far left here to advance the screen to the right. And that's the end of the most difficult part of this stage. If you can get through that auto scroller, the rest of this is a piece of cake. All we need to do here is make our way to the upper right where we'll find a lizard. So switch off, get into that lizard body, take him down, watch out for the flying squirrels here, you'll need to leap over them, climb up over this part, and then down and down to the right, don't jump in that pink area below, that'll get you killed, and then you can just switch back to Nemo, and we have a downward moving auto scroller here. Wait for the platforms to get close to the top of the screen. If there's a float fiend on the screen, you'll want to hit him with your candy. Otherwise, that guy will follow you almost the entire way down. So just let him get close to the top of the screen and then jump to the next platform. You can get the one up here. There will be a platform below you. Just make sure you wait long enough. And just keep jumping. You don't want to fall off the bottom of the screen. That's all that matters. And then make our way to the right. Wait for this snail to walk off of the house. Jump again, and here are all the keys. And there's the door. We're on our way to dream number seven. This next dream is another big sprawling maze, not too different from the Nemo's house level that we played in dream number five, except this time, everything is flipped upside down. Because dream number seven, is topsy-turvy. Once you get into topsy-turvy, make your way all the way to the right, where we will find our very first key. Once you have it, head back to the left, and there's a pillar that touches the floor, with a couple small platforms above it that you can climb to get onto the higher level here. Make your way back to the left, where we will find a frog to ride, Feed him three candies and get into his skin. Then grab the key in the upper left corner. It's number two. Head back to the right. You can jump on top of these frogs if they're giving you problems. And once you get to this banister, you can turn off the frog and attempt to feed this hornet some candies while avoiding the float fiends. Once you have the hornet, you can actually attack these flying squirrel enemies from far enough away that they won't trigger at you. And if you fight these plate monkeys on the far right of the screen, they won't even throw plates at you. So just keep shooting them with your stinger until they're gone, make your way over, and grab key number three. Fly over to the small platforms and head into this gap in the ceiling. In this room, you'll want to go into the upper left corner to grab the fourth key. That's an easy one to miss. Switch off the hornet and feed the mouse. Once you have the mouse, you'll want to climb up the vertical wall on the right. It's very difficult to get up here without getting hit by the float fiends. Take out these bricks with your hammer. It can be a little bit tricky to hit that next to last one on the bottom. And then make your way down grabbing this health item. And we're on to the next part of the stage. Down here you'll see a frog, but you'll want to take out the plate monkey, climb the wall and grab that key first. Then jump down here, feed the frog, and get his suit. Make your way over to the right. You'll want to try not to jump too high here, so that you don't end up on that platform above you. So make a little shallow jump and you can grab a 1-up and a health kit. Carefully make your way back to the left. We'll need the frog to get up to the higher levels here. So come over to this green banister and jump up, then jump up again, and over here we'll find a hornet. Feed him three candies and then start flying over to the right. 
Watch out for that crow that drops eggs on you. And fly up here through the gap in the ceiling. On the left side of this wall, there is a one up. And once you get it, you can just fly down and go to the right side of that wall, up through the gap in the ceiling. Here there's another plate monkey, but this time there's an all-important key. That is the sixth key, so take it, come back down, and then just start making your way up these platforms. Ideally what you want to do with the float fiends is get it to commit and then kind of drop down while it's stuck in a fixed position. Land on this platform and fly over to the right. And this is pretty much the end. Just kind of, you know, use your hornet to make it down to where the door is. Land on the platform, grab the seventh key below the door, fly up, and that's it. We've made it to the final stage. Dream number eight. Before we head off to the final stage, we are treated to another cutscene. But this time it's not Nemo waking up in his bed with his mother yelling at him. No, this is a much lengthier cutscene. And we finally meet up with Princess Camille. Princess Camille is the one that sent us the drug-laced candy. Thanks for the drugs, Camille. Good stuff. She has a little bit of a mission for us. It seems that King Morpheus of Slumberland has been abducted by the Nightmare King and taken into the depths of Nightmare Land. Yep, it seems that the Nightmare King is plotting to take over all of Slumberland and destroy nice dreams forever. Oh no! Well, it's a good thing that Princess Camille does have an ace up her sleeve. A special weapon that the game calls the Morning Star. Now, in the movie, they actually call it the Royal Scepter. And when Nemo uses the Royal Scepter, he has to speak an incantation. It's something like Shazama Pajama, and it's, it's very long, and it takes a while to charge up the weapon. That mechanic is actually faithfully recreated in the game. Now, he doesn't actually yell Shazama Pajama in the game, but if you hold down the B button after you've selected the Morning Star by pressing Select, you can press Select to actually toggle between it and the candy, which we can still use, and we will definitely need in Nightmare Land to ride some animals. The Morning Star is actually a legitimate weapon. Now, you may have noticed that Nemo has always seemed to have a magic wand at his back, and so it's kind of like we had the Morning Star all along, but we can actually use it now. So whenever you have it out, you can hold down the B button to charge it up, and you'll actually see a beam meter appear on the screen. And when you let go of the button, you'll fire off a blast, and it even makes Nemo recoil a bit, so you need to be careful with that. You can also just press the B button and tap it to use the Morning Star as kind of a mace. And with that, we're off to dream number eight, Nightmare Land. The first section of Nightmare Land is actually pretty easy. Just feed three candies to this lizard and climb up this stair-like rock formation, then make your way to the right. Do some shallow jumps to avoid hitting the spikes in this tight corridor and just walk off this platform to the right without jumping. Keep heading to the right. When you get down to the bottom here, there will be some lava. Watch out for the fire that shoots out of it. But as the lizard, you can just walk over those small gaps without falling in between. Climb up this tree. There's some health on the right if you need it. And make your way up the right side of the tree and jump off early so you don't hit the spikes at the top. Down here, you can just make your way across the small platform suspended above the lava, and we will hit our first nightmare boss, the Kingpen. Charge up and shoot at the Kingpen on the right side. He always appears on the right first. Now you can just swing your Morning Star without charging it to hit the smaller penguins that he launches, and you'll want to kind of dodge between the bubbles 
whenever he shoots those out. Whenever the king pen is up in the air, I like to take that time to just pick a side and start charging up my morning star. Hopefully he'll appear on the side that I'm facing, and if he does, I'll give him a taste of the full blast. If he appears on the other side, well, I'll just release my charge, turn around, and hit him with a lesser blast. You don't want to wait too long to charge, or you may accidentally shoot one of the penguins that he releases with your full beam and not actually hit the king pen at all. Just keep practicing this strategy. Charge whenever he's in the air. If he lands on your side, hit him with the full blast. If he doesn't, turn around and hit him with a half blast. And eventually, he will explode and we'll be on to the second part of Nightmare Land. The second part of Nightmare Land is a good bit more difficult than the first. Make your way all the way to the right to snag a 1-up before you begin climbing the platforms here. If you were to lose all of your lives in Nightmare Land, you can continue as many times as you want in this game, but you'll continue from the very beginning of the first section. Yeah, that means you'll need to fight the Kingpin over again, all of it. So you'll want to grab whatever extra lives you can. Take the lizard and carefully climb this vertical wall. You'll want to hide in that corner for a moment while you dodge the float fiend, and then make your way back to the right on this higher level. Take this inclined platform and up at the top here, carefully weave your way through the fires. The ones from the ceiling won't hit you as the lizard. You need to jump to this platform so that you can get the frog. Don't immediately jump as the frog and hit yourself onto the spikes, but just kind of come back the same way that you went when you were the lizard, except this time we will be able to jump up to the higher platforms here. Once you're up here, you'll want to probably carefully jump through this part and just walk through, walk off the edge, and we will be in the next part of this stage. There is a checkpoint here, so if you were to lose a life, you'll come back right to this point, but you need to be careful of this ceiling. When you get to this spot, turn into Nemo, jump quickly across these two platforms and run off to the right. That move can be pretty tricky. Watch out for this flying army ant enemy, and just keep making your way to the right, being careful to avoid the ceiling. At the end, there's some health, and just swim onto this platform here. Don't go back to the left. A crocodile will appear in the water. And over here, we will encounter our second nightmare boss, the Fire Stingray. The Fire Stingray always does the same pattern, so you can expect it to appear on the right side and then make a diagonal flying attack and then another attack across the bottom of the screen. Then it'll appear on the right again and shoot fire at you. If you stand on the left side of the middle platform, you can just keep hitting it while it's over there. Watch out as it flies across the screen again and this time it'll appear on the left. So get ready to shoot it over there and it'll come down into the middle. Just hit it again and if you don't kill it this time, it'll actually appear on the right again, so be ready for that. And that's it. That's the Fire Stingray. We are on to the final part of Nightmare Land. Well, this is it. This final section is not actually that difficult. It just kind of leads us to the final boss. Make your way to the right. These platforms look like they might be very icy, but they're actually not slippery at all. Make sure to take the upper path here once you get into the cave. Watch out for this crusher. Wait for it to be going up and then jump across. And you'll take the lower path here. Use your morning star to take out the bats. And at the end of it in the corner, we will find a lizard. Feed the lizard some candy. If you just hold left as you move back here, the bats will fly right over your head. And we can go over here and use the lizard to climb up to this higher platform that we were unable to reach before. Head over to the right and we'll find a hornet. Feed him some candy. And then we'll have that ability to fly and shoot stingers again. The hornet might be my favorite form in the game, even if it is a little bit less powerful than the gorilla. Just head out here, you can take the lower route to avoid the crushers. 
and outside of the cave we can fly up to a platform we couldn't reach before and switch over to the mouse. I've always found it strange in this game that when Nemo transforms he has black hair, but when he's in his normal form he has purple hair. Pretty weird. Make your way across these lava flows. Watch out for the crows that drop eggs and the fire that shoots out. And there he is. The Nightmare King is looming in the background. We just have to get to the end of this screen. Go down one more small section and it's going to be time to battle. Before we fight the final boss, there are a couple one-ups in this area, so make your way over to the right, get that health if you need it, and the first one-up, then drop straight down and get two more. Drop off of this platform, you'll need to remove the mouse when you hit the water, and make your way to the right, climb up this stair formation, Drop off to the side, make sure your Morning Star is equipped, and start charging it, because it's time to fight the Nightmare King. The Nightmare King only has two main attacks. The first is he shoots this red ball of slime at you, and you can either hit that with the Morning Star or just try to avoid it, but whenever it's removed, he will spawn a new one fairly quickly. The second attack is he shoots you with some lasers from his fingers, and he always telegraphs that attack by waving his hands around a bit first. If you're all the way at the left side of the screen, you should be able to easily jump over one of the lasers, or it will just pass over your head. Either way, it's not that difficult to avoid. The challenge is, you'll think you need to charge your weapon up a lot, and if you're caught charging, that's how you get hit. So you're better off just doing small half-charged blasts at this guy, and just trying to whittle him down by hitting him with as many of those as you can. So don't worry about charging it fully, just do some small charges, aim for his face, and eventually he'll explode. That's all you gotta do. And that's it. You've defeated the Nightmare King and saved Slumberland. All we can do now is sit back, relax, and enjoy the cheesy ending. Well, I hope this video helped you keep your promise to Princess Camille and finally saved King Morpheus from the clutches of the evil Nightmare King. If it did, make sure to give it a like and make sure to subscribe for more videos because there will always be more promises to princesses to keep and there will always be more nightmares to wake up from and that's why we'll be back next week with another video game you can beat. Thanks for watching.